Welcome to The Rock. We hope what you watch today inspires you. And we'd love to hear your questions and comments via Twitter at The Rock of York. You can also find us on Facebook or contact us through the website at www.rockofyork.co.uk. In the meantime, let's crack on. Good evening. You okay? You happy? You real happy or just sort of happy? You're so happy the guy next to you is getting nervous? It's good to see you. Good to be back. Always good to be in this house. Love you guys. Appreciate what you're doing. Appreciate you allowing your pastors out from time to time so we can share some of what you get on a regular basis. We can share it on an infrequent basis over in the States. Good to be with you. Have you ever noticed... Uh, let, let me say this differently. I have noticed after years of working with people, th there's two things that I think are absolutely imperative for us to be able to, to really achieve the fullness of purpose we have in life. How many of you know God has a full purpose for your life? You, we use words like destiny and big words like that, but it's a fullness of purpose, a fullness of plan. There's two things that I found that, that uh, we really have got to, to get a grip on if we're ever going to get there. One of them is this. We have to learn how to encourage ourselves. How many of you know that's important? You learn, have to learn how to, we would say in Texas, how to pick yourself up by your bootstraps. You have to learn how to encourage yourself. But there's times that you can't even do that. A second thing that we need to learn is, is how to navigate disappointment. This evening, I want to talk to you a little bit about navigating disappointment. Ultimately, that comes down to an issue of trust. How many of you have ever been disappointed? Okay. Somebody made a promise to you and they didn't fulfill the promise. You made a prayer and it didn't seem like God was even there, much less heard it or answered it. And you came away disillusioned, disappointed. And if something, done, something doesn't change, that turns into despair there's a verse that I've always loved in the Bible. I'm going to posture it to you this, this evening. Proverbs 3, 5. It says this, Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Lean not unto your own understanding, but in all your ways acknowledge him, and he'll direct your paths. Let me read it again. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Lean not unto your own understanding, but in all your ways acknowledge him, and he'll direct your paths. I was thinking about that verse a few weeks ago. And I noticed something as I was kind of doing a little word study on it. The, the word acknowledge actually is the word that means to know. So in all your ways, get to know him. You hear that okay? It's the exact same word that the Bible uses when it says Adam knew Eve and she conceived a child. So it's a word of intimacy. So think about this. And all your ways acknowledge him, and all your ways get to know him. Use that occasion to deepen your intimacy with him, and he will direct your paths. In fact, the last part, direct your paths, it literally means to take crooked ways and to make them smooth or to make them straight, to take hard things to navigate and to make them easy to navigate. So my question is, how do you navigate disappointment in all your ways, all your ways? You get a promotion at work. You wanted that promotion, that's good. In all your ways, use that occasion to get to know him better. Now let me add one other verse to this and then that'll just be my platform from which I'll speak. Psalms 23, verse five. It's in the middle of that is found this one statement. You remember it's called, the, uh, it's probably the most popular of all the Psalms. Uh, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. You remember all that? You get down into verse five and he says, and he prepares a table for me in the presence of my enemies. Okay, what's the table? Figuratively, metaphorically speaking, what is a table? Well, it's a place, it represents a place of communion, a place of feasting, interaction, hospitality, a place of intimate gathering. So think through this. In all your ways, get to know him. In all your ways, here it is, find the table. In the midst of your enemies, in the midst of things you can't explain or understand, 
find a place of getting to know him better, a place of communion, intimacy, because then he'll help you navigate the crooked ways and the difficult ways. So the title of the talk tonight is Finding the Table. So when we encounter disappointment on our journey, and we will encounter disappointment on our journey, shake your heads this way. Mm -hmm. What do you do? Scream? Cry? Go for a long run? Pour yourself a tall drink? <laughs> <laughs> Now, being from where I'm from, I'm one of the states that have legalized marijuana, so I could add smoke a joint. But anyway, <laughs> I won't go there. <laughs> what do you do? How many of you think, if navigating disappointment is an issue of trust, and I submit to you it is, how many of you think faith is important? If you're going to learn to handle disappointment, how many of you think faith is important? Faith brings answers, but it doesn't bring all the answers. That's why there's something in the Bible called enduring faith. In James 1 verse 2, he says, Consider it all joy, my brethren, that you encounter various trials. Here it is. Knowing that the testing of your faith produces endurance. In other words, a tested faith is a faith that cannot be answered on demand. It's a faith that requires some expression of endurance. If faith brought all the answers, you wouldn't need enduring faith. Faith would just be like a vending machine. You put your prayer in, pull the knob, and out comes your answer. We wouldn't need enduring faith. But faith brings answers. You ready? But enduring faith brings answers with character. James 1.4 says, And let endurance have its perfect result, that you may be perfect and complete. And by the way, that word perfect has nothing to do with sinlessness. It actually has to do with being complete, which is the following word. That's why most of your translations use it and complete, lacking in nothing. Now, what does endurance require? I used to be a runner, believe that or not. I can tell you there's two things that Running, long distance, endurance running requires. Number one, it requires undistracted focus. Runners call it the zone. I remember I was actually running one morning, and we have these lanes in Austin where we can get over into the bicycle lane or, or jogging lane and you run. And it was early in the morning and I was running and I put on my headphones and basically my zone, I stare down in front of me about 20 feet in front of me and I'm listening to music and, and, and I'm jogging and I'm, I'm, I'm in a zone. I'm not paying attention to what's going on around me. Somebody parked a car in the jogging lane and I didn't know it was there until I actually hit it. Now, that's undistracted focus. A second thing that's required for endurance is extra strength from a deep reserve. Runners call it breaking through the wall. Somewhere we have to be able to draw on a strength down inside of us. Now, let me ask you a question. Those of you that, are, that read your Bible or have been acquainted with the things of God, when you think of the power of God, what do you usually think of? What do you equate that with? Miracles? Okay. Healings, those kind of things. I do. That is a type of demonstration of God's power. I love to see those things. But in all fairness to the testimony of the book of Acts, the power of God is first displayed in miracles, but secondly, the exact same power that produces the miracles is produced in miracles endurance your ability to keep going your ability to break through a wall let me tell you something that might even be greater than witnessing a physical miracle a healing of such is to stand in the midst of mystery where there isn't a breakthrough and that person finds the strength to keep saying Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Even though the answer hasn't come, the solution hasn't been seen. Yes, Lord. Can you say that? Yes, Lord. 
Everybody in this room is going to have plenty of opportunity to learn that. It's never any fun, but it is maintaining trust in the one who is the only one who is perfectly trustworthy. It's the greatest privilege of the Christian life. Now, I want you to look with me at a portion of Scripture in Hebrews 10. I'm going to flash it up here for you. But before you do that, I want to make a couple of notes about navigating disappointment. These are really huge, important notes. Here's note number one. When, 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 when you're in the midst of disappointment, you're praying, you're trying to find solution, and the answer does not come, delayed answers are gaining interest. How many of you have ever struggled with patience? I, I, I tend to be fairly impatient. Although I'm doing better as I get older, maybe I'm just tired. But uh, <laughs> a delayed answer is like money in a bank. It's gaining interest. It's earning money for you. Delayed answers are always gaining interest. Number two, when God says no, it's because there is a better yes to follow. He only says no when there's a better yes. Y'all okay with those two little notes? All right, Hebrews 10, 35. Therefore, do not throw away your confidence, which has a great reward, for you have need of endurance. You have need of endurance. You have need to keep going. So that when you have done the will of God, you may receive what is promised. So the power of God in our lives is not only to demonstrate the kingdom of God, to demonstrate the liberating power. There are times when a miracle doesn't seem to work. When the prayer doesn't seem to get answered. And your ability to navigate disappointment is locked in your ability to keep going and, and keep your yes on. Keep saying yes before the Lord when circumstances seem to deny anything and everything that you thought would happen. So the power of God, the same power that produces a miracle, is also seen in your ability to endure. So, he prepares the table for us in the presence of his enemies. When you get the promotion of work or when a loved one dies. In all your ways, get to know him. Use the occasion to deepen the intimacy. Take a moment to focus on the one who is more than enough. Because if you do that, the disease of the heart which comes from disappointment will not devour your heart. By the way, how, how do you deepen your intimacy? Just a little caveat, side trip. The key to intimacy is centered around two things. One is honesty. How many of you know honesty in a relationship is key if you're going to deepen that intimacy? And a second is transparency. Now, there are certain attitudes that kind of set us up for some disappointment. I want to look at a couple of them with you. These are attitudes we don't want to enter into. These are attitudes that ensnare us. Number one, thinking you know how God will answer. Y'all aren't smiling. Thought you said you were happy. I watch people pray. They pray for a loved one. They find them a Bible verse, stick their finger on that Bible verse, praying for somebody to be healed, put that finger on a Bible verse, and then they put all their weight and their walk with God on that one Bible verse and God doing one more miracle. I believe in miracles. I really do. I've seen, seen too many of them not to. But this is so ridiculously dangerous. I mean... It's ridiculously, ridiculously dangerous to put your whole walk with Christ, everything you've experienced with him, upon him answering something the way that you have understood or predetermined that he should answer it. Am I okay with that? Y'all with me? There's this constant allurement to attach our trust to what we know, what we think we know, what we understand but really what we don't understand. And then we attach to that and say, now God, if you're really God, you're going to do this. It may not come out your mouth, but it resonates and rings in your heart. Thinking you know how God will answer sets you up for disappointment. 
Okay? Number two. A second way we invite disappointment is when we fail to see the bigger picture. When I look at something that doesn't work, sometimes I see faith bring an answer. That's awesome stuff. We believe God, we trust God, we pray, God comes through, boom, it's there. But sometimes I just get the feeling when I look at a situation, there's more involved to this than what I see. There's some other pieces. And I don't yet know how to dismantle it, how to unwrap it. And in the midst of that rings this one little exhortation, it's not all about you. Come on, shake your heads this way. I don't know how many times, I have a 38-year-old single daughter. She's a single mom, had a kid, one of our most wonderful grandchildren. We've got eight of those things. How many of you have grandkids? Wonderful. And, uh, uh, she, she, Dad, I, I, you know, she's been praying for her husband, looking for her husband. Tried on a few for size. I just didn't, you know, I didn't say that. She, she, uh, <laughs> you know, <laughs> she does date, but, but hadn't been able to find one. And, you know, God, Dad, why isn't God answering my prayer? And sometimes I have to look her in the eyes and say, honey, it's not all about you. What if God's working on him, whoever him is? What if God's getting him ready? Trust me, you don't want him before he's ready. Come on, ladies, that's where you say amen. That's right. Good point, Bob. <laughs> Sometimes we just don't see the big picture. And when we don't see the big picture, it sets us up. For disappointment. In that neighborhood tonight, I want to destroy the idea that there's any one formula that brings answer and breakthrough. Well, I prayed it this way, I did it that way, I attached this verse to it, stood on my head, stacked greasy BBs, you know. <clears throat> so when we go through losses and they're very painful, it has to drive us to a secret place with the Lord a place of greater intimacy. We have to learn how to say, God, I want to know you better. God, please increase my understanding. Open my eyes. So when it involves a loss or a disappointment or things that we all walk through as individuals, we need to be able to stand with an absolute yes to God. We need to be able to keep our yes on and realize that that is not all about me. It's not all about what I'm doing or not doing. There is a bigger picture. Let me give you one third thought, and then I'm going to bring this together. Here's a third thought. You need to remember, now we've talked about two negatives. Here's sort of a positive one we need to be aware of. In your strength, in your weakness, he is made strong. Remember the scripture that says his strength is perfected in weakness. Anytime there is a person that is depleted of all their strength, everything they can muster up, they can't strengthen themselves. They can't encourage themselves. They need someone else to lift them up. Yet at the same time, they retain this most profound yes to God. That is some of the most profound kind of strength that I believe exists on this planet. It's yes in the midst of absolute inability. Yes. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. It actually means something. Mm -hmm. It's not a challenge when everything's going well. It's easy to trust when things are going good. But what about when you find out you just find out you have cancer? What about when you just lost your job? So, there's faith that brings answers, but it doesn't bring all the answers. Number two, there's an enduring faith that brings another level of answers. It brings answers with character. But then there's a third area. When, how many of you know God's brain is bigger than your brain? Oh, brother. Y'all are a hard crowd. <laughs> when things happen that we cannot figure out, to these, God says, all things work together for good according to his purpose. 
you cannot lose trust in the one who's perfectly good. We have to realize that there are going to be things that happen in this life that we're not going to understand. And if for some reason the answer seems to be delayed, then it's gaining interest. If for some reason it seems that God is saying no, then it's because there's a better yes to follow. Many of you have had deep personal loss, things I don't have an answer for. But all I know is this. During those times, I have to find my way back to the table. Because he put a table there, and it may be surrounded by enemies, by what, but they're actually powerless. It may be surrounded by difficult circumstances. But in all my ways, I want to get to know him. All things work together for good. That's for all the stuff that makes it through the faith and the enduring faith. All I'm saying to you is that there's some things that simply we're not going to understand. And to these things, God says, I work all things together. Y'all okay with that? It is the confidence. It is the endurance. God will work all these situations for his glory. And in eternity, you're going to look back on everything. Everything that you've ever questioned. And you're going to say, amen. Didn't see it all then, see it now. There was more to it. Wasn't all about me. Oh, God was delaying the answer, but it was gaining interest. God was saying no, but there's a better yes to follow. Maybe God's building character in my life. I see that at that time. So I was enduring. Are you all okay with that? Find your way to the table. Navigating disappointment. Stand to your feet with me, please. I want to pray for us. You know, I... I uh, I want to pray in just a moment, but while your head's about, I, you know, I, I've always had this love-hate relationship with funerals. I hate them. But in some ways, they're probably the most important times in our lives. I don't like them, especially when I, I, I'm asked to do one for people I don't know or very difficult circumstances, a child, these kinds of things. And, and, but every time I'm there, I sit next to a casket, stand, walk behind a casket. And I pray, God, don't ever let me get okay with this. And what I mean by that is this. Funerals have a way of putting us in, in touch with eternity. You know, we all get real sober at, at funerals because everything is framed in life and death. Life is a breath. It's a shadow. Eternity is a substance. And, and, and funerals kind of keep my heart tethered to eternity, to the desires of God and, and the purposes of God and, and even why I'm here on earth. And for some strange reason, I find that encouraging, empowering to keep going. This run on earth, this journey on earth is a short one. And the older you get, the shorter it is. <laughs> and so I want to run a race with endurance. I want to be able to navigate the disappointing times. I want to be able to fulfill the fullest of purposes of God in my life. And I know to do that, I must learn how to trust him and to hang on to that trust. Even when the answers don't seem to come or or when they're delayed, or when maybe there's a no. I have got to learn how to find the table in times of disappointment. I want you to grab the hand of somebody beside you, if you don't mind. For some of you, that's going to be hard, because you're all by yourself. <laughs> and I want you to pray for that person on either side of you. Go ahead. Father, I pray that you'd raise up a generation 
of champions that know how to hold on to that yes. They don't let go during adverse circumstances. I ask that you grow a people in wisdom, unravel the mysteries of diseases and afflictions and torments. Father, I ask that you give breakthrough. And Lord, I I ask for an unusual ability for every person right now in this room to find the table in the midst of their enemies. I thank you, Lord, that even in the midst of difficult circumstances, that you're there, that you care. So, Father, give us the grace to keep our yes on, to keep saying yes, Lord, no matter what the circumstances. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. God bless you. All right. We're going to have a song in a minute. Thanks, Bob. Appreciate that. If somebody can get rid of this, that would be wonderful. Um, yeah, so uh, we've already prayed that way, but, but I want to ask again if, if there's anybody here who could use a prayer for this reason. Um, If I have to get to here, while ever there are steps in place, it's not too difficult. Most of us can make it while ever we can see that there are steps in place. Trouble is when the steps are not in place, it becomes a different challenge. And I, I I can make that, but I can't make this alone. So, so James, if you, so he can't make this alone, but what I can offer him is, I can offer him a hand. That's why I ask if some of you need a prayer, because for some of you, you're here tonight, listen to Bob, you think, got it, endurance. I can see the steps to get where I need to be, but some of you, like James down here, where you think, unless somebody gives me a hand, I ain't going to make this. That, that's, that's the miracle part of the kingdom of God. This is miracle, but it's based on information. This is miracle, but it's based on faith. The willingness to take hold of something else to pull you up. I, I, I believe that's why we were told to pray for people because it's offering that hand to say, you might not have the steps, but we can pull you up. So if anybody could use a prayer tonight, just put your hand up. If you could use a prayer tonight, thank you. Anybody else, you could use a prayer tonight. Some people facing some real challenges, personal, physical, use a hand. We're going to pray. I'm going to ask you to do something for me, if you would be so kind. It's just to bow your head and close your eyes, just just for a moment. The reason I'm doing this is because I'm going to ask those who already raised their hand, just put your hand in the air right now, because we're going to pray that prayer that brings a hand out of heaven to give you the lift up. Those who raise your hand, put it up right now. I didn't want you to be embarrassed. So, but, But we're going to pray from the physical to the personal to the psychological to the wounds to the pains whatever it is today, right now, Father, I, I pray that, that as these hands are reached towards you, that, that the hand that reaches to us from heaven that was so beautifully displayed in you sending Jesus for us now takes the hand of everyone who's raised their hand in here to give them the lift up to that next level, that level they want to reach but, but can't quite reach and, unless they have a hand. But you're reaching out today and by the power of your spirit are bringing people to the next level. I call every one of you up to the next level because God has taken all of your hand. And as he pulls you up, be willing, be willing. James had to be willing to trust me to pull him up, otherwise he would fall on his backside. But he trusted me to pull him up. Trust God right now to pull you up and not let you fall on your backside because there is a miracle for you right now that we're releasing in Jesus. And it is true that all things work together for our good. All things 
That's not a God can do whatever he likes and who cares and we just have to accept everything. God is working in all that, the Bible says, for the good. He is working for the good. Everybody say, for the good. Right? Not so that nonsense can take over our life. God is working for us, for the good. Right? For the good. And all things are working together to bring us to that place. God is working for your good today. And we release that blessing upon you. So we're just going to sing and then... And then I guess we're done tonight. Thanks, guys. You make all things work together for my good. You make all things work together for my good. Thanks for watching. You can find out more about all the rock is doing locally and internationally at www.rockofyork.co.uk. And why not support the rock from wherever you are? Just hit the donate button now to help us help others. <laughs>